Hello everyone, it's Rock. Um, I just feel like I, I need, to, I don't know, it's weird. I feel like there's something I have to say, but I don't know what it is exactly. And I think, like, someone out there would understand what I'm talking about, because I haven't really spoken to anyone in, I don't know, I mean, like, at work and stuff, yeah. But, um... I don't know. I just, there's something I need to talk about. I know there is. I mean, we can talk about taxes. We can talk about music. We can talk about comic books. We can talk about anything, but like movies. Oh, <clears throat> there's something. There's a topic right there. AMC versus Universal. <laughs> it's not what I want to talk about, but, uh, Universal said, uh, Due to the strength of their Trolls World Tour or whatever the movie is called. <clears throat> Excuse me. Anyways, uh, the Trolls World Tour. They were going to uh, do all their movies. Like, when it hits the theater, they're also going to video on demand. And AMC said, uh, yet. We're not going to let that happen. And if you do this, we're never going to run another one of your movies in our theaters. And now, I think Universal is the uh, Fast and the Furious and the James Bond. You know. They're not going to play those movies in their theaters? I don't know. I, I honestly couldn't talk to it. Because I'm not sure exactly about this stuff. But, I mean, it's a movie studio versus a... Uh, you know, uh, a theater chain, like, probably the biggest in the world, or at least in North America. AMC says, Nyet, we're not gonna let you do that. I'm like, yeah, whatever. I'll watch them on video on demand, but I don't want to pay 20 bucks so I can watch it on my phone. You know, it, it's just not... That, that doesn't make sense for me, but if I had a family, if I had a place to be, and I had friends, and I had things, you know, 20 bucks, so we can all watch it on, you know, like a cast from my phone to a big screen, you know, something like that would be rad. I mean, I know I have friends out here, I know people care about me, and I know there's a lot of love out there, but I'm just saying, like, tonight it's windy, it's getting cold and I'm outdoors and, you know, I'm feeling a little maudlin for some reason. I rarely get down. I rarely ever get down. Hmm. What happened? I got a good night's sleep. Kind of. Uh, until my legs started cramping up. I guess that's it. Like, if I try to roll over, my legs cramp up and then, well, you know what that feels like. Uh, like, there's, you know, there's no oxygen to the, and it hurts like a dagger stabbing deep into your body. But yeah. Uh, Universal versus AMC, I think Universal's on the right track. I do. Because, I don't know, the movie studios have been against, well, here's the thing. I love going to the movies. I, I like to go to the movies. I mean... I saw Bloodshot and The Invisible Man and The Hunt uh, when all the movie theaters shut down. It was like the last movies I'd seen. I love going to the movies, even if there's no one there. Uh, it's not the crowd I care about, it's the film. I, I want to I wanna watch movies. I, I care about film. And I care to see, like, every movie Almost. I mean, the kid ones, you know, the blatantly kid ones, I don't want to see them. But, uh, I've heard they're pretty good. And Trolls World Tour, uh, you know, on VOD made more than Trolls 1. So, I mean, there's that. Uh, I just don't know. Uh, should I be excited or not? Uh,. I mean, Wonder Woman 84 is supposed to happen at some point. But the way the world's working right now, which is 
Matt Colville put it the best. He said, there's no way we're not all going to get it. Flattening the curve just helps keep the hospitals in stock for when we do eventually get it. We flatten the curve by staying home, all you fucking assholes. Well, I shouldn't say that. You're good people. You're all good people, but nobody stays home in my town. Not at all. Not a single fucking person stays home in my town. They're all out. They're all shopping. They're all congregating. They're all in my drive through line at KFC. I mean, it's all day, every day, and non non-stop. The minute I put on the headset until we close. Non-stop people. No one's got a stay-at-home order in this town. The rented center is open. Think about that. Of all the non-essentials, rent a center is open. Like, people have money to go and get a new couch or whatever. Anyhow. I love you all. Anyone who watches this video, I'm going to say to, from the heart, I, I absolutely and truly love you. Uh, thank you for being a supporter of this channel. I know there's not a lot of you, but, uh, you know, I don't know. Like this video if you like the content. And definitely hit the subscribe button if you want more of it. And share this with a friend of yours. Because I could use more subscribers. And I, I have a feeling like when I get paid, I'm going to buy like a thousand subs. Because I just, I just Googled it. How do you buy subs on YouTube? <laughs> Found a page. hundred bucks, a thousand subs. And then I could monetize my videos and... I don't know. It, I mean, they'd all be bots and shit. But I could go live then too. And that might be fun. Like, be able to go live from my phone, so the 22 or 20, well, 1,022 of you uh, could actually, like, see me, and we could talk to each other, and, yeah. I don't know. But my channel growth is not happening. There's nothing happening. I try to post videos every day. I've, I've been a little lackadaisical, but when you work all day, and you get off late at night, and then... You know, you gotta drink a couple beers and you gotta feel all right. Uh, yeah, I'm feeling all right right now. And uh, yeah, AMC versus uh, Universal, it's just silly. What movies are they gonna show? If, uh, if they don't have Universal movies, you know, it's gonna replay Marvel movies or DC movies or... Uh, you know, I don't know what's out there. I honestly don't. Are they going to get Marriage Story from Netflix and play that on the big screen? I would like to see that. Because I saw the movie on my phone, and it it's it's really good. Marriage Story. Uh, Kylo Ren and the Scarlet... No, not the Scarlet Witch. The Black Widow. They're the stars. If you know what I mean. It's Adam Driver and Scarlett Johansson, and they're in a divorce story. And, uh, let me tell you, it's really good. It's a really good movie. Maybe AMC Theaters could get a deal with Netflix to play Extraction on the big screen. Because I'll tell you, I'd pay, I'd pay top dollar to see that on the big screen. And watch it on my phone. Holy shit, that movie's amazing. I know my uh, review of it has zero views or something. But that's fine. I mean, that's not... I got a phone. I stand out in the dark and I make content for my channel. It's not like a big deal. But uh, everyone should see Extraction. It's Chris Hemsworth. If you didn't like Thor 1, 2, or 3, or Guardians of the Galaxy, or Infinity War, or whatever that movie was that he's in, eh, well, I don't blame you. I don't like those movies either. Uh, 
Well, Thor 1, I absolutely love. But, uh, after that, yeah, don't care for the Thor movies. Uh, I like the actor and his character, but, you know, I'm a comic book purist, and the MCU is anything but pure. Anything but the comic books, you know, like, take the lore and they throw it in the trash and they create some new one and you know whatever it is whatever this isn't a video about that this is a video about amc versus universal i think i don't know see this is why i want to go live this is why i want to go live so i can ask the chat if anybody watches i can ask them like hey what do you think because it's just me talking to myself, and that's why I do believe I'm going to buy a thousand subs. <laughs> you can Google it. Like, how to buy subs on YouTube. Just Google it. There's a site. It's a hundred bucks for a thousand subs. <laughs> They're all bots and shit, but I can monetize my videos. I could, uh... I don't know. I, I could live stream... I could go live from my phone. For some reason, you need a thousand subs to live stream from your phone. But if I was on my laptop, I could live stream with my 22 and it'd be just fine. I don't understand the bias. I don't at all. Because I remember when uh, the Red Gaze went live. And I was like, he's only got like a hundred subs. On my phone, it takes a thousand on the computer doesn't take shit doesn't take shit at all you don't have to have any subscribers you can go live but on my phone I can't go live so you know and I would love to chat with all of you I would love to just like you know it's like we talk about movies and we spend time together on my live stream I it just seems like a fun time. I mean, other, you know, unlike this, you know, where I just talk to my phone and I, hey, look, there's Chase Bank, and let's make sure you can all see it. They've never been your friend. They never will be. And they hire the best looking people in your town so that you don't feel bad when uh, they tell you, oh, we're, uh, we're foreclosing on your mortgage, yo, and we're going to take your house away from you. <laughs> you know, it, 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 that kind of stuff always comes, like, it, it comes better from a, a beautiful girl than, you know, me. I, I couldn't, uh, if I had to deliver that news to somebody, I'd be like, dude, don't kill me. It's not me. Don't kill the messenger. People hate the messenger, but it's a pretty girl. They'll be like, they'd, they'd feel bad for her. You know, most people would feel bad for the girl that had to deliver that message, especially if it's a pretty girl. So, yeah, I mean, this world is made up of all kinds of standards. But, uh, you know, AMC ain't going to win this fight. They're not. They're not going to win this fight. Universal can day and date all their movies on digital, just like comic books do. You know, the day they come out, they're available on digital. Why not movies? I mean, it fucks the movie theaters, and it fucks uh, the distribution centers, and, you know, all that stuff. All that stuff that's going on. Uh, all those people that need money, too, but you know what? I mean, there is, there are movies that need to be seen in a theater. I believe so. I mean, I really want to see Wonder Woman 84 in a theater. I really, really, really want to see that movie in a theater. I don't want to have to watch it on my phone. You know, if it's just VOD'd. You know, 20 bucks for two-day rental. I'll buy it. I'll, I'll spend the money. But I won't enjoy watching it on my phone. Now, I'll tell you this. I watched uh, Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn on my phone because uh, I bought it off YouTube. And uh, 
I, I never sail the high seas. I just don't do it. Uh, so I bought it off YouTube and I was watching on my phone and that movie's really good. I don't... Everyone wants to take shots at everything all the time. And I get it. I mean, it's part of why... It's part of why Hollywood hates the internet. And why they are, they're always so, like, vehemently, like protective of the properties you can't just you can't just like say hey I don't like that and leave it alone nah you gotta go online and talk tons of shit I don't know it, it's just me I like watching beautiful women do awesome shit I'm not a feminist of any kind I'm not a male feminist like white knighting all the time no I just it's Margot Robbie and Jersey Smollett and Elizabeth Winstead and uh, they're very attractive girls and they're kicking ass I, I dig it I really do uh, I've always liked that stuff I mean all the go all the villains are white guys and people always bring that up to me when I talk about how I like that movie I'm like yeah so and it's like, it's offensive to white guys, you know, that all the villains are white guys. I'm just like, why? Watch almost any movie. And like, and I'm not just talking about now, go back like 30 years. Watch those movies. The villains are white guys. It's nothing new. It's not anti-patriarchy or any of that bullshit. It's just... It's just what it is. Cinema, like American cinema, has almost always only featured white people in it. And, you know, that's where the term token came from. Because they put in, like, the black guy just to kill him right away. You know. And I understand it's not good. It's not... It's, it's a bad practice, but it is what it is. This is how... The world works. This is how things happen. And then a, you get a person like Anita Sarkeesian shows up. Now, I don't know everything about her. I don't know, like, really anything about her. Except she's got a channel on YouTube called The Feminist Agenda or something. I'm not sure exactly what it's called. But, uh... People in Hollywood try to get woke, if you know what I mean, and they watch her videos. And she teaches you how to, like, get woke. And The Last of Us 2 is going to fucking fail completely, utterly, because the people that worked on it were very unhappy. The writer, director, Neil Druckmann, uh, He's, I, I can't understand how he'd be happy about the game's performance because nobody wants it anymore. Uh, it got leaked because, you know, the people that made it, someone in that studio hated it and hated his work environment and hated the fact that he couldn't get an advance on his pay. But Neil Druckmann did, you know, it's stuff like this, it's, because the game isn't going to make any money, so all the people that work on it, worked on it, aren't going to get those big bonuses, and I feel bad for all of them. But, uh, I, I thank the leaker. He saved tens of thousands of people 60 bucks. Or, you know, even more money. Even more money. If they bought, like, if they pre-ordered a special edition or something, huh. Thanks to the leaker. Because the story is fucking awful. Uh, the gameplay might be rad. And I, I imagine it is. I imagine uh, the mechanics of the game. The, uh, the graphics. I know they're going to be top notch. Like, going to be the best anyone's ever seen in a video game. Especially on the PlayStation 5. It's going to look amazing, right? And it's going to play amazing. Because The Last of Us... The first one had 
mechanics that were so good. Like, it's one of the best games ever. I, I didn't like it, and I hit a wall pretty early because I wasn't very good at it. That's on me, though. That's on me. It's not the game's fault. It's on me. Uh, my buddy Nick, like I said in another video, we couldn't we couldn't get past it. A mini boss of some kind. We just, we didn't, together we couldn't beat it. And I was like, well, I like how the movement works. I like when I went into the water and I got out, my guy was soaking wet. And it stayed that way for like a while. Yeah. Naughty Dog makes great games. They do. They make awesome games. But The Last of Us 2. <sighs> Story-wise, I I never want to play it until it's in the five buck bin, you know. Then I might buy it, but I ain't paying sixty bucks for a game I don't want to play. Shit, there goes my voice again. Hmm. Laryngitis. I'm sure I've been out here singing and talking to my phone and anyhow. Uh, as I've stated before, I love you all. Uh, don't buy The Last of Us 2. Don't give them any money because uh, Anita Sarkeesian has poisoned the well over there at Naughty Dog. And, you know, they got rid of Amy Henning. Now, see, this is the thing. This is something that pisses me off the most. They had a female writer. And she wrote, like, Uncharted 1, 2, and 3. And she directed, like, one and two. And two is one of the most highly regarded games of all time. And they had a girl working on the games. You understand what I'm talking about? It's not some woke male feminist trying to subvert your ex expectations. Like Rian Johnson or Ryan. I don't know what his name is, but I don't care. Anyways, it doesn't matter. What I'm saying is, there are things out there that we should hold dear to our hearts. And there's other things out there that, uh, well, you shouldn't care about anymore. I like The Last of Us. I loved the Left Behind DLC when I got to play as Ellie. And that's what I was hoping for Last of Us 2. I get to play as Ellie. And they took that away from me. And they took it away from everybody. And, you know, and Anita Sarkeesian is a big part of that. And Naughty Dog. Uh, I, this is unsubstantiated rumor, but, like, when Neil started writing this video game and he had a group of writers and producers and shit, they were all going to go like, yeah, let's work on this. Uh, all the higher-ups at that company fucking quit. I don't know if that's true, but they didn't want to be any part of this. They didn't want to be any part of this nonsense and the shitstorm that's happening right now around this game. Nobody wants it. No one in their right mind wants this game now. And every gamer, like PlayStation gamer, I have to say, because it's a PlayStation exclusive... I would say 85% of the PlayStation population was going to get this game. I don't know how big that is. I honestly don't know how big a number that is. But I'd say 80, 80 to 85% of them, myself included, was going to buy this game. And uh, I, I thank the leaker. Saved me 60 bucks plus tax. You know, like 66 bucks here in Arizona. It's about 10% tax, so... But, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm not afraid to talk about it. I mean, I dared Sony to strike my video down, but... It's still up, and if you want to see... If you want to unbiased, un, uh, unabashed, like... And a sad review of the leaks. There's a video on my channel. Uh, 
Skull and Last of Us 2 and Thoughts. Something like that. I don't get into spoilers on there. I don't... I, I, I know all the spoilers. I've seen all the video and I've read the story. And I'm so disappointed. Just... But, I mean, this is me. It's just me. It doesn't have to be you. It's just me. Uh, you might like the direction they're taking. If you've seen the spoilers and you like the direction they're taking, good for you. I mean... I know the mechanics of the game are going to be rad. I know they are. And the graphics are going to be the best. Like, it's going to win, like, awards for the best graphics. I know it is. Because it's Naughty Dog, and they hire the best people, and they make the best games. And I imagine it's going to be a fun game. It's just the story is so awful. That's that's all I got to say about that. Uh, oh, yeah. I, sorry to CVS over there. I always say they're war profiteers and shit. Well, it's not them. I mean, nothing's locked down in my town. Not a fucking thing. Uh, this bank, of course, is uh, the movie theater and the entertainment district. Yeah. And the bars. But, uh... Not the people. The people that live in this town aren't quarantined at all. And it's not just to go to work, you know. A lot of people are out of work. Because of, you know, the coof. And, uh, you know, I worked the drive through at KFC. And... It's non-stop. It, it doesn't ever end the, until we close. It never ends. There's people coming through all day long. Like, there's a line before we even open. And I'm not joking. I'm like, isn't everyone supposed to stay home? Isn't that the idea? Aren't you supposed to stay home to stop the spread of the coof? But nah. Nah, not in my town. Not at least, as far as I can tell. I mean, the Safeway that I shop at, they, they have a limit on how many people can be in there at once. You know, they're trying to do the right thing. And Walmart, I think they're trying to do the same thing. But, I'm just telling you, nothing is shut down here. I don't live in Phoenix, you know. I'm in Arizona, but I'm not in Phoenix. And in this town, like, all day long there's people going around. Like, I don't know if you can hear the audio of cars driving by. Uh, and obviously I'm outdoors because I'm homeless, but... There's cars going by all the time. Like, I remember the other night, I was like, everything in this town is fucking closed. Everything. Even Rilberto's over there. They're closed. There's nowhere for you to go. And there was cars going by all night long. I'm like, I don't know what they're thinking they're doing. I honestly don't know what they, they think they're doing. But, yeah, in my town, there's nothing. Nothing. Uh, I mean, businesses, the Denny's across the street had to shut down. You know, the sit-down restaurants are closed. This bank right here, it's closed. But uh, all the restaurants are open. We don't let anyone in our lobby at all. It's all drive through And that's why, you know, constant cars, never-ending cars. You know, at least until you hand your headset off to the guy that's relieving you. <laughs> you know, or the girl. <laughs> it's... There's no lockdown in my town. See? There goes somebody right now. I don't know where they're going. I don't know where they're coming from either. But I mean, if I looked at the highway, which is over there, you'd see cars constantly moving by. Because, yeah, 
I mean, I have people come through my drive-thru and they're like, I'm on my way to Phoenix. I'm like, wait, what? Aren't you supposed to self-quarantine? Nah. We're just going to go do what we do. We're going to enjoy our lives. We're going to, you know, whatever. I'm thinking Arizona man. See, check this out. Where are they going? Arizona man is going to become the new Florida man. You know? But I don't think we have the laws here that uh, automatically post, like, every arrest to the internet like they do in Florida. I think that's a law that passed over there. Like, anyone gets arrested, it's posted to the internet. They're mugshot and everything. Even if they're found... Uh, you know, innocent. Florida man did weird shit. Florida man does weird shit. Yeah, and here's another siren. <laughs> Anyhow, I love y'all. I was gonna end the video, but uh, that Last of Us Two shit. It's it's kind of like a gift that keeps on giving. Like, okay, so, <laughs> Anita Sarkeesian went online yesterday or early this morning and posted how sad she is. Not for the gamers that are missing out on their game, no, 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 no. For herself, because she's been drug into this. And, I don't know, she posted something stupid, something abhorrent. Uh, she said, like, people act like Star Wars and Ghostbusters and The Last of Us is all they have in their lives. To some people, that's all they do have. I mean, not all of us have, like, rich lives where we have, like, an abundance of friends and you know, an abundance of stuff that we like. Uh, some of us, like me, I have a phone. And I have YouTube. And this is all I do. And, yeah, you stupid fucking bitch, Anita Sarkeesian. How the fuck can you say that? Some people, like me, or like others, we don't have a lot in our lives. And we do look forward to the new video game release. We do look, well, I don't look forward to any Star Wars, anything, anymore, because people like her poison the well. And, uh, you know, I hear there's a new Indiana Jones movie in the works, but I'm sure... I just, I, I just can't trust that it's not going to be woke as fuck. And ruin everything. Now, people said the kingdom of the, you know, the crystal skull or whatever. I don't know. I saw it once. I thought it was a fun time. I didn't look too deeply into it. I didn't care. I was, I'm not a critic of movies, at least not back then. Uh, South Park roasted it hard, though. And, you know, for that, I thank him. I do. I, I, you know, I thank South Park for coming after the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull because maybe it needed it. Maybe. I don't know. Saw it once. Thought it was fun. That's all. I, see, I never even looked back on it. I never looked back on it. I saw it with my mom and my girlfriend. We had a good time. We laughed and... You know, we all were like, well, that was dumb, but, you know, when the, like the ants killed that guy I'm like well I, I've heard about this I think that really happens so you know I mean that stuff really happens and I'll tell you this this is something I did like it's the second one that didn't deal with Christian mythology and maybe you know that's why people li didn't like it I mean aliens and the second one was about, you know, Hindu mythology. And I like that because it's different. It, it, it's so different to me as a young man. Like, my mother was a Sunday school teacher. Heard all the stories about 
Jesus and God and all that stuff. Then I go see uh, the Temple of Doom and I'm like, you betrayed Shiva. And, you know, I'm like, wait, what? How does Indy know this? And what the hell is this? Years later, playing Mortal Kombat 1, I played as Kano. Because I learned his fatality real early. And it's not hard. It's like back, back, punch. <laughs> like That's all I got to do to do his fatality. So I got really good with Kano. And I was back, back, punching everyone's hearts out. And, you know, he's a thuggy. Kano's a thuggy. Like, uh, you know, the bad guys in Indiana Jones 2. That's who Kano is. And... That reached to me through the years, through all the years. Yeah. And it still sticks with me. I love Kano. He's a bad dude. And he'll rip your fucking heart out with one punch. Yeah, always like that. I don't know if he kisses it or takes a bite of it. In the first one, he puts it to his mouth. I, I'm hoping he took a bite of it. I really do. Again, and now here's something, another topic we can talk about. How Netherrealm got woke. All the guys in Mortal Kombat look like the guys from Mortal Kombat. Like you know, right? They have the same costumes, everything, but the girls... They're all covered from head to toe. And I'm glad, like, the populace liked the game. I mean, I think the gameplay is probably awesome, just like 10 was. But 11, they had to, they had to take the traditional costumes that the women had worn in that game and uh, shrink their breasts... And cover them up 100%. To appeal to whom? People that don't buy video games. People who... All they do is get online and talk shit. That's all they do. And they're afraid of getting talked shit about. So they... Put every woman in a fucking burka, basically. And that's not cool. It's not fun. It doesn't doesn't change the gameplay at all. It's just, you know, this part of Mortal Kombat that's titillating when you have to fight those beautiful women. But, you know, woke culture says we got to cover them up and we got to reduce their breast size. We can't over-sexualize the girls in a video game. And this is Anita Sarkeesian. I'm sure she had a hand in that. I'm sure she talked to the director of Mortal Kombat 11. Or he watched, like, sent a link to her, one of her videos how, you know, women in video games are over-sexualized. And they bent the knee to Anita Sarkeesian, who is a nothing and nobody and a grifter. Here's the thing. Either you bend the knee to Anita, or she sends the mob after you. Online Twitter mob. To brigade you. To downvote your videos. To downvote your game. Uh, to ruin you, basically. And, uh... Her close personal friend, Zoe Quinn. Uh, she killed a guy this year. She got a Twitter mob to go against him. And she knew him. She was date she dated him for years. She knew him, knew his mental state and all that. And got a Twitter brigade to go against him. And the guy killed himself. Zoe Quinn is a murderer. Anita Sarkeesian is an accomplice in that murder. But you know. It's just woke culture. That's just how it is. It's like us versus the mob. And, uh... I don't know what it's like 
I, well, I know what it's like in the real world, but you go online and people are so awful. I try to be a nice person. I try to be a good person. There's, you know, uh, I'm not a troll online. Not at all. My online persona is uh, very positive. Uh, I hate Brian Michael Bendis and Heather Antos. And I hate Brian Michael Bendis. Like, for real. I really hate that guy. I, I, I hope for the worst for him. Like the other day I saw him online, he had an eye patch on. I was like, I hope he never gain, regains the use of that eye. I honestly was like, I want that guy to just go away. Get out of comics forever. And, you know, I know it's bad to wish you know, wish bad things happen to people, but that guy ruined everything that I love. And like Anita Sarkeesian said, it's not like you only have this and this and this. I mean, come on, right? It, that is what I had. It is what I loved. It is what I like counted on to bring me joy month to month. And Brian Michael Bendis took that away from me. And now he's got the Legion of Superheroes. And he's taken that away from me. It's like, it's like that motherfucker knows me, right? I'd never once, well, I mean, I probably posted on Facebook how much I hate what he did to the Avengers. I don't know if you ever saw that. I don't know. But, I mean, I was mostly a DC guy at that point. The only book I was reading was Avengers. Because Jeff Johns was writing it and Scott Collins was drawing it. And it looked great. It felt great. It was a great comic book. It, you know, it's just one of those things that you enjoy month to month. And then Jeff signed a, you know, exclusive contract with DC. So he had to leave the book. And, uh... They hired Brian Michael Bendis to wreck everything. And he did. He did a great job of it, too. I mean, if you want all your shit wrecked. Like, if you wanted to take apart everything that was the Avengers. And I mean everything that was the Avengers. Like, they blow up Avengers man Mansion in the first scene. And that's gone. They don't have that anymore. They don't have a home anymore. They don't have a training room. They don't have any of that stuff. It's all gone. And, uh, yeah, they dismantle the vision just because they kill Hawkeye. They kill, uh, Jack of Hearts and Ant Man. And, I don't know. Just everything you loved about the Avengers, they take it apart and destroy it. And they don't rebuild. They, they they don't rebuild it. It's... I mean, it's truly the worst fucking comic book I've ever read. And, you know, I've read a lot of comics. And I've read so many comics in my life. But, uh... Avengers Disassembled was no fun for me. And then New Avengers was even worse. New Avengers number three... Worst comic book ever made. Because all the art is great. I, I'm i not going to diss... Uh, uh, what's his name? David Finch. His art on that is amazing. It's just a betrayal of the story. And, and again, here we are. We're at Last of Us 2. Right? The story is what betrays us. It's not going to be the gameplay. It's not going to be the mechanics or the graphics. It's the story. It's the story that fucks everyone up. It's the story that nobody wants. If you've followed the leaks. And, you know, 
I know what happens in The Last of Us 2, and I don't want to play it. Uh, you know, like I said in another video, if it's in five bucks, you know, in a, you know, five bucks, I'll, I'll get it, you know, and I'll play it because the mechanics are going to be rad. Like the gameplay is going to be awesome. It's just a story that fucking sucks. And, uh, yeah, that's what, that's, that's why I hate Brian Michael Bendis because he can't write a good story. I mean, he started one. He started an awesome one in Avengers. New Avengers. Started the most awesome story. I was like, this is so fucking cool. And then issue three comes out and subverted my expectations and totally fucking wasted my time and my money. Eh, nope, I'm out. I'm done. Fuck you and go fuck yourself and... Eh. Anyways... Yeah, Brian Michael Bendis is the worst. And now he's got the Legion of Superheroes. I'm just like... Is nothing sacred? Is nothing sacred at all? You gotta give this fucking hack like the coolest IP ever. But, you know, that's my opinion. And, uh, you know, most people don't like it. Most people don't like the Legion. For the most part, people don't like the Legion of Superheroes. I mean, they haven't read it, so they don't know about it, and that's why they don't like it, you know. But now that Brian Michael Bendis is writing it, no one likes it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, the book sells like 1,300 copies a month. <laughs> and uh, that's cancellation. That's cancellation. Even before the coof. Even before this nonsense. Nobody wanted it. And not from him. Not from him. I wanted uh, Jeff Johns and Jim Lee to do the Legion. And I... When Rebirth started... When Rebirth started... I was, sh I was almost sure that's what I was going to get. Whenever they got around to it. You know? Whenever they got around to making the Legion of Superheroes... It's going to be Jeff Johns and Jim Lee... And we got Brian Michael Bendis and I don't know who. I don't care. The art's good. Uh, but the character designs are fucking ridiculous. I don't know. Uh, the characters are a thousand years in the future. Right? The Legion of Superheroes is a thousand years in the future. And so they made them look like Not them. I can tell you this, like, the costumes that they used to wear, like, everything that's come before since 1953, nothing like that. Nothing like that at all. Nah. Nah, we know better, right? We're better than them, because we're modern, and we're stupid as fuck, and... Ugh. I knew I didn't have any idea for this video. AMC versus Universal, that's a good start. And me versus Brian Michael Bendis. Bendis is a good place to end it. I don't want to end it, though. But I gotta, like... <sighs> Hold on. Just bear with me. Sorry. My head hurts. I need a... Uh, I need a little something something. I know there's nothing to look at and I'm not... Bar I'm barely talking, so... Alright. Well... I guess we're gonna do this. Ugh. All right, there we go. And uh, I know I'm gonna have another topic here really soon. Um, oh, this is news. Uh, 
that I haven't talked about on this channel. DC Comics is publishing digital comics every day. They're putting out a new comic book every day. That's something. Uh, there are the Walmart comics from a couple years ago. But hey, you know, at least they're putting something up. And, it, you know, digitally. Because, you know, no one can go to a comic shop right now. Anyhow, I, that's pretty cool. And DC, uh, there's, they're like, nah, we're done with Diamond. So they hired a couple other companies to distribute their comics. One on one side of the Mississippi and the other on the other. Right? <laughs> um, I, I like it. I do. <laughs> they want to get their comics into shops like right now. They're trying to put out new product while, you know, everyone else is pencils down. DC didn't have to fire anybody because they kept producing comics. They didn't have to pencil down anybody because they keep producing comics. And it's, you know, not a lot. And it's, uh, oh. It's digital, right? A digital comic. I, for some reason, people don't like it. I don't know. I've been reading digital comics since 2010. Uh, I dig it. I do. I really like it. Uh, it's not my preferred method of comic book reading, of course. Gee whiz. Gotta put some light on this. There's nothing to look at there. <laughs> of course, a lot of my videos are me looking at the lights at Fry's. When I lived in my car right next to there. Um, but yeah. Uh, oh, wait. Here's some good news. Here's some good news here at the end of the video. I don't know if you shop at Walmart. But if you go to like the book section at Walmart. Coming as far as I know May 5th. So that's like Monday or Tuesday. Uh, or maybe Wednesday. I don't know. Uh, they're going to have an end cap. With Allegiance Art comics and I can't wait I can't wait I, I cannot wait to go and buy those books I can't it's so exciting they made it uh, the Brightweisers uh, made a deal they brokered a deal with Walmart to sell their comic books in like every Walmart in America So they're getting their comics out there and they got a four comic book line and each one of them is going to be like a six issue story and they're coming out every month and they're being distributed straight to Walmart to, uh, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, here's the best part. They're not putting them in that tchotchkes aisle. You know, where the Magic cards and the Yu-Gi-Oh cards and stuff are? Nope. It's going to be in the book section, the magazine section. And they get an end cap. They brokered a really good deal. Uh, I can't wait to find them at my local Walmart. I mean, I'm going to buy all the books. I'm going to get all four. But I might be the only one that does it. And that sucks. So, uh, Anyone out there that's watched the video this long? <laughs> Shit, it's almost an hour long. Well, <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, you know, these comics they're putting out, there's not characters you know. They're, it's new ones. It's brand new stuff. All four books is new stuff. But I'll tell you, like, Butch Geis and Kelsey Shannon and Mitch Breitweiser are on the art. If you don't know those guys, well, <laughs> I didn't know them either <laughs> until I started watching Comicsgate videos. And, you know, that's when you get to know these people. I love Kelsey Shannon. He's so fun. Uh, I'm glad he's put his, you know, his hands to the grindstone. He's been working hard. Uh, 
like, because no one knows where he's at because he's never on the Jack Show anymore. And it's Jack Show is John, Anna, uh, Cecil, and Kelsey. But he hasn't been on but once in the last month or so. Nobody knows where he's at, and people don't know if he's alive. But then you, your boy Zach is like, dude, the colors on this book were done by Kelsey Shannon. And it's like, oh, he's been, he's been working. That's all. He's just been working. That's why. And he's making those books for Allegiance Art. And I can't wait to find him at Walmart. I honestly can't wait to find him at Walmart because, hey, kids, comics. Uh, yeah, I'm going to promote the hell out of them. If I, if I see them at Walmart, like they have the end cap like they're supposed to, uh, I'm going to make a video and I'm going to like, well, this is going to be after I get paid, uh, and I buy a thousand subs because, you know, hour long videos don't go over very well. It's weird though. I watch like three hour, four hour, seven hour live streams. <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but I do. I honestly do watch streams that long <laughs> and it, it doesn't turn me off, right? Oh, a seven hour stream. This is what I want. But, um, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to shoot video. I'm going to like buy all the comics there and, uh, I'm going to review them all and I'm going to like, I'm going to make sure that this news gets out there and it's just going to be after I buy my thousand subs. Cause you know, if I only have 22 subs, no one's going to see it. So I got to buy a thousand and then it'll move up in the recommended and I'll be in a hotel room while I do it and I'll have something to look at. I'll be actually looking at the comics and sharing them. Yeah. It, yeah, I can't wait. I honestly can't wait. I mean, I know it's going to be good. They got good writers, good, well, except for Mark Pellegrini. I don't know if any of you know who he is, but I guess he's, he's gone like full SJW since he started writing the comic. And they had to kick him off the comic and then rewrite the whole comic book, but it's his story, right? So they got to keep his name on there, even though they had to write, rewrite all the dialogue. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's, it, this is exciting for me. And it should be exciting for anybody who loves comic books. Go to your local Walmart book section and find the Allegiance Art uh, end cap. There's going to be four brand new comics for you to read. And the art is going to be amazing. Stories are going to be awesome. I, I just don't know what to say, man. At, at that... This is the good news. This is the good news of this video. And hopefully my local Walmart gets them. I don't know if they're gonna. You know, 3,000 Walmarts in America are gonna get this. Because that's the deal they brokered. That's the deal they brokered with Walmart International. They're not gonna put them... They're not gonna put these comic books in the tchotchkes aisle... Nah, they're in the book section in the back where people will actually get the chance to see them without, you know, traveling down a narrow corridor for magic cards or Yu-Gi-Oh or NFL training, trading cards, any of that shit. I mean, I love Magic the Gathering and I always have, but always. Well, since 1993, I've been a fan, uh, you know, but yeah. Anyhow, like since the thing became a thing, I've been a fan of it, <laughs> if that makes sense, because there weren't magic cards before 1993, but yeah, I mean, I'm excited for this, uh, if, if it's in my local Walmart, now like my local Walmart had all the DC books back in the day, and I think they still do, but they moved them from, uh, 
they used to be on the like a main aisle, like as you're checking out. You know, like a checkout aisle, the DC Comics were there. The $5, 100-pagers, they were right there in the checkout aisle. So, like, you'd be walking up to check out and you'd be like, oh, what's this? Batman, Superman? Um, I'll throw that in my cart. And then they were relegated to the Tchotchke's aisle. And... N- nobody goes there because there's not even a cash register right there. It's awful. At least in my town. In my town, it's like that. I don't know what it's like in your town. Uh, Like Jim Lee, in his video, he found them and they were on the bottom rack. It's like, how is anybody going to see this? How is anybody going to entice by this? I'll tell you, those DC books, the $5, 100 pagers, they were rad. Uh, I had so many of them. Uh, especially the Teen Titans one. Because, uh, okay, so you get a new story, right, in the front, by Dan Jurgens and I don't know who, right? The artist. The art was pretty good. It wasn't anything to write home about. But the uh, second story is... Jeff Johns and Mike McCone's uh, Teen Titans, starting from issue number one. It's a reprint, of course, but it starts at issue number one. And then after that, you get like, I don't know, 100 page giant. There's four comic books in there. The first one being the shortest, like the original one is the shortest. Like, the rest of them are full-blown comics. I'm trying to remember what the other one was. Because the last one was Sideways. It's, uh, you know, New Age of Heroes character. Basically Spider-Man. But, uh, drawn by Kenneth Rockefort. OMG. I can't even explain how awesome that comic was. It's the new age of heroes at DC. It's like, it's an incentive, right? They're trying to like revitalize the line after metal, because metal destroyed everything and metal destroyed rebirth. So they, here's all these fun new characters. I'm in. Honestly, I'm in. I want fun new characters. I want fun new teams. I want new stories. I always want new things because I might be old, you know, I'm, I'm going to be 48, like, next month or something. Wait, is today May 1st? Yeah. Next month I'll be 48. And, uh, I've always enjoyed new things. I, like, people were like, the blue Superman's stupid. I'm like, why? Doesn't it look cool? Isn't the character design fucking rad? And the stories stayed the same, except... You know, he's not vulnerable to kryptonite anymore. Because he's electric blue Superman. (laughs) And when Azrael became uh, Batman. You know, it's things like this. New stories. trying Trying to promote a new thing. Like when Kyle Rayner became Green Lantern. I'm on board. 100% on board. Not that I didn't like Hal, but he's... Such an old guard superhero. It's like when Barry Allen died and Wally took the mantle. I had every issue of the Wally West Flash. Every fucking one of them. Because Wally's my Flash and Wally's a... He's just an awesome character. But, you know... Things change. People don't buy it. Whatever. Whatever. It, it was an extreme meritocracy back in the day uh, in comics. You know, if your book didn't sell, well, it got canceled. And it happened all the time. Even if the book was great. Even if, you know, a guy like me absolutely loved it. Like Aquaman by Rick Veitch and, uh, shit. I opened my big mouth and I can't remember. Ariel Olivetti, I think. 
brand new Aquaman number one by them, Rick Veitch and Ariel Olivetti. And they retold, well, they didn't retell, they continued the story. They continued the continuity. Aquaman, turns out, was the one that sunk Atlantis. Yeah, get this. Aquaman, Arthur Curry, in the distant past, he sank Atlantis to save everybody. I know it sounds weird. I know it sounds weird. But you get Aquaman number one and the the Atlanteans have learned the truth. Like the modern day Atlanteans have learned the truth. That he's the one that put them down there. So they chain him up on the rocks in the sun to kill him. And it gets free, you know. But his JLA uh, uh, communicator gets broken as he's freeing himself. And he's dying. He, Arthur is absolutely dying. And he crawls his way. Like, he tries to get into the ocean. But there's, like, all the animals and the people that are down there are out to get him. So he go, moves inland. Right? He's just, he's crawling inland and he finds like a lake and he takes his hook hand and he throws it into the lake. This bastard thing never did anything good for me. You know? And he gets up to the water and he starts taking a drink and then a woman appears in the lake. And, uh, she's like, take of my waters. And you will have Excalibur. And, you know, it's like, wait. Is this, any of this real? And that's where he got his water hand. And his water hand is amazing. He can heal with a touch. And he can turn it as hard as diamond to punch motherfuckers. <laughs> and they told him, don't punch motherfuckers. Heal the world with your new power. And I absolutely loved his costume because there wasn't one. He's like, I don't know. The way that artists drew him, uh, it's Arthur, hulking brute Arthur, right? And he's got his short blonde hair and he's got no shirt on. And he's got like barnacle like, uh, uh, trousers on, like, it's orange and green, you know, like his normal costume, but he's bare-chested, he's, he doesn't have anything else, he's got his pants and that's it, he might have a necklace of puka shells, but, uh, you know, and his hairy chest and his, uh, his amazing musculature, they're there for all to see. And for the first time ever, I was like, check it, everyone. Aquaman looks fucking rad. And even my friends that don't read comics were like, dude, that's rad. <laughs> that's, that's like not a costume. Because, you know, he's lakes and rivers Aquaman at this point. He can't go in the ocean because all the monsters and all the, all the animals in the ocean hate him. So he had to redeem himself. So he's lakes and rivers Aquaman for a while. And I can tell you, those are my favorite stories ever. Rick Veitch. He wrote my favorite Aquaman. But get this. Nobody bought it but me. <laughs> I mean, the comic shops ordered like three copies. And I bought one of them. And the comic shop was stuck with two of them. You know, and then they realize that there's just one person on Earth that's reading this and enjoying it, and they were going to cancel the series. And then they got, maybe it was Donnie Cates. I, I have a feeling it was, that, that name sounds familiar to me now when I think about DC and Aquaman, because Rick Veitch was doing such a great job. 
And, uh, nobody was reading it but me. Like I said, like 12 issues in, uh, that team is gone. And then, uh, Patrick Gleason got on the book, and I hated his art back then. Just absolutely hated it. I love it now. I didn't, I didn't know what he was trying to do. Because it looked so ugly. Everyone looked so weird and ugly. Where, you know, the guy before made everyone look beautiful. <laughs> but I, it's a style, right? He's trying to evoke some kind of style. And I can appreciate that now, but I didn't then. I was like, God damn, Aquaman was so good and now we're getting this shit. And, uh... Some madman sunk San Diego into the ocean. And somehow the people that lived in San Diego could breathe water, but not air anymore. Eh, I, I, I just didn't care. I mean, it's a neat story, but I didn't care. I mean, I loved Lakes and Rivers Aquaman fighting against the giants of the world, like... Because he's King Arthur, you know? It, it's a complete and utter allegory of King Arthur, and Rick Veitch made that a thing. And he also said, like, if you use that water hand, you could condemn the whole world to darkness. You know, if you used it for evil or, you know, for violence. And, you know... Arthur's a really strong guy. He didn't really need that hand to do violence, but he he could turn it as hard as a diamond and punch people, you know? And he could do other things with it because it's a water hand, right? He could heal with a touch. He could, uh... He could touch, like, an evil person with it and it would, like, show them their past and all the mistakes they made and all this, you know... This is King Arthur. That's that's what they were getting after in that series. I mean, he's a low down being, right? He's not at his he's not at his best. He's lakes and rivers, Aquaman, because, like I said, he can't go in the ocean. But uh, he's also King Arthur, and he has Excalibur in his left hand. I don't know. It, read it. Read it for yourself. I thought it was fucking awesome. I. And this is Aquaman number one from like 19. I try to think what year it came out. Maybe 2001. Maybe 2001, 2002. Um, yeah. Read it for yourself and tell me what you think. I mean, it's. It's not a traditional Aquaman. It's not like the Aquaman in the movie. I'll tell you that. And people like that movie. I love that movie. Uh, they just like made like my favorite superhero into a billion dollar franchise. Can't wait for the next one. But I have to because Warner Brothers sits on their fucking hands all the time. They can't just like get it together and make a sequel. Nah. What do they want to do? They want to make a movie about the trench because that was a pretty awesome looking scene and now we want to make a movie about them not Aquaman 2 and we want to make a movie about Volko starring Willem Dafoe and I'm like can't you just focus I mean this, this is something that Grace Randolph went off about in her uh, you know the best DC Comics movies ever thread or video. She's like, there's so many different interpretations about all these characters. Now, I like it. I like the fact that we can, you know, it doesn't have to be the one straight from the comic. It, you can take a different approach. And I'm like, yeah, I, I didn't like Batman 89, but I was 17 then or 16 then. And that's not what I wanted. I wanted a comic book accurate one. 
But as I've gotten older, you know, I understand the different, the different angles, the different attempts. And that's, you know, uh, that's why I love Batman v Superman, except for the Martha scene. I think that's stupid. It wouldn't have been stupid if they weren't so heavy handed with, uh, you know, reminding us about Bruce's parents' death and how, you know, he reached out to his wife as she was dying. You know, it, it's that stuff. It's. It, it, that bit in the movie felt so heavy handed. It. It's never going to be a favorite scene of mine. I mean, I was so stoked that Batman was going to kill Superman right there. I was like, holy shit, this is about to happen. And it was really about to happen. I mean, he had the spear ready to kill Superman. He beat his ass. He, he'd shown everyone he's better than this guy. And he's going to kill him. And then, you know, if they didn't, like, hearken back, like, right then. This this is what I talk about, heavy-handedness. Like, he's like, they're going to kill Martha. And, you know, Bruce takes a step back, and he's like, wait, what? And, uh, it's... It saved Superman's life. And then, uh, you know, Lois Lane runs in. And it's like, that's his mother's name. She's been captured by Lex Luthor. This is why he attacked you. Yeah. Anyhow. It would have worked a lot better if we didn't have to see Thomas Wayne calling for Martha at that point. If they'd left that out, and it's so easy to leave it out. You know, Batman's about to kill Superman, and he's like, they're going to kill my mom. I think that would have worked way better. As evinced by Civil War, just a month later. Uh, very much the same setup. You know, they got heroes fighting each other, and then uh, Iron Man loses his shit. That son of a bitch killed my mom! Well, shouldn't let that happen. But you were a kid, you were a baby. When your parents were murdered, you were just a little kid. I think. No, wait, wait. That doesn't make any sense. Fucking... Civil War doesn't make any fucking sense. If the Winter Soldier had killed the Starks, how can Tony have any resentment towards his father for the way he treated him? None of this makes sense. But, you know, it's comic book movies. Whatever. Lol. Only the only good Marvel movie is The Winter Soldier. Captain America The Winter Soldier. It's the only good one. I mean there's some fun ones out there. I mean, I like parts of Infinity War where everybody dies, everybody gets turned to dust. I like that part. I hate uh the Hulk in that movie. I hate Thanos and you know, what he how Thanos just beats up the Hulk. I hate that and anybody who Watches my channel and has watched my videos will know that. Absolutely hate that. You can't beat up the Hulk. You, that's not what happens. You can't do that. He just gets bigger and stronger. And it was well evidenced in the uh, Ang Lee Hulk, starring Eric Bana as Bruce Banner. Like, as the bullets are hitting the Hulk, he gets bigger and stronger 
But an MCU, nah, Thanos can just punch him out. Because they got to show what a threat Thanos is. They couldn't have, like, Ebony Maw, like, I turned off his brain and his powers, now kick his ass. That's easy enough, but they didn't do that. No, Thanos just beats him in a fist fight. Hulk's not a great fighter, but he doesn't go down like that. You can't punch him in the jaw without him growing. Anyhow, this is another video. That's why I hate Infinity War. <laughs> that first scene took me completely and utterly out of the movie. And the fucked up part is, people have debated me about this. Well, Thanos had the power stone. I don't give a fuck. It's the goddamn Hulk. You don't beat up the Hulk. The strongest one there is. When you hit him, he gets bigger and stronger. It, it, you can't beat him up. Yeah. Anyways, we've, I've gone over this many times in other videos, and that's why Infinity War fucking sucks to me. But there are parts I like. Especially, well, I wish Shuri would have been dusted, but when Black Panther got dusted, I was like, yeah. That movie's a piece of shit, too. And I mean, a lot of people like it. And I'm not saying, like, you shouldn't like it, but there's so much stupid shit in that movie. So much awful, stupid shit in that movie. But that's just me. You know, I got a review of Black Panther on my channel, too. Uh, yeah, I'm not a big fan of the MCU. And I didn't dislike the Black Panther because it was black people. I disliked the Black Panther because all of the stupid shit. A, a vibranium car. Really? And Shuri, her absolute intellect, who never went to school. Uh, those are two things that just break my brain. I'm like, wait, no. Yeah. <sighs> Anyhow, yeah, I'm not going to say I hope you enjoy this video yet, because I'm probably going to delete it. It's just me talking, it's musings, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to talk to somebody, and eh, there's no one to talk to. So, I talked to YouTube, and <laughs> give me a moment. i got to put on my sweater, it's getting freaking cold out here. You know, when I had not slept for over 11 days, my head didn't hurt like this. You know, like, I never have a headache. I've never had a headache in my life. Unless it was sinus, you know, sinus headaches, yes. But, uh, not like, you know, the headaches that everyone else gets. Never had one. I don't think. I mean, maybe when I was a kid. I don't know. But I think just my head hurt. For some reason. Some aspirin and it went away. You know, that kind of thing. It doesn't fix it in the morning. Well, is 
That stupid shit. Anyhow. Oh, my sweater. This is getting cold out. If I have it on backwards, I don't care. No one's gonna know. Uh-oh. Anyhow. There's something to look at. Ugh. Look at the sky in my town. Yeah. <sighs> What else have we got to talk about? I don't know. Uh, I know we're at 86 minutes. There's no way I'm going to upload this tonight. Uh, let's see where our battery's at. 56%. Wow, Thor Love and Thunder. Ugh. Talk about that, huh? Thor Love and Thunder. Taika Waititi is going to direct a movie starring Jane Foster. Picking up the hammer of Thor. I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, Natalie Portman is a beautiful young lady. Uh, I wouldn't mind her, like... Becoming something super powered. But the way they did it in the comics is like. No I'm Thor. And like Thor's standing right there. He's like wait what? You're a girl. And you, you're you carrying my hammer. And she's like yeah I'm Thor. And I'm like no. In my mind. In my brain. And all the shit that still works up there. Thor's a dude. Thor is a dude. That's his name. It's not a superpower. It's who he is. Like, back in the day, there was a transformative power that turned, uh, you know, Donald Blake into Thor. And, uh, another guy. Uh, what, what's that guy's name? He'd slap his, uh, his fist on the ground and he would turn into Thor. And Thor wasn't that guy at all. They, Thor was not Donald Blake. He wasn't Eric, whatever his name is. No, you do the thing and you become... Like, maybe they rode around in his head, but they were not him. He's a character all of, on his own. It, Thor is a god. His father wanted him to learn some humility, so he sent him down to Earth... Or sent Mjolnir to Earth with an inscription on it. You know, he whoever is worthy will hold the power of Thor. And when they got the power of Thor, then like Donald Blake didn't turn into Donald Blake as a hulking brute called Donald Blake. Nah, he turned into Thor. Or they switched places. I don't know exactly how it worked. I don't know the mechanics behind the whole thing. But, um, back in the day when he'd hit his his uh, walking stick on the ground, he turned into Thor. Now, in the modern comics, when a girl uses the power, right, she turns into Fem Thor, which is nothing that's ever happened before, and I know I'm a sexist and a racist. I know. I I don't like Fem Thor. I don't. 
I think the artwork's great. But uh, the writing is right there on the wall. Woke shit nonsense. I mean, you're hurting my head with your fucking bullshit. Um, but, you know, at least... Wait. Everything is happening in my head. I'm not actually seeing anything. Like... Now, I don't have another tablet open or anything where I can look at this stuff. So, uh, I guess I'm going to cut it off here because I think I'm losing my mind. Um, it's okay. Um, that's Chase. That's CVS. War Profiteers. That's a gigantic green and yellow building. And if you can see between here, there's a, that bright light. That's Rilberto's Mexican food. And they're open. Right now. Probably only for carry out and drive through. I don't know what time it is. Is it midnight? Yeah, it's 12.30. Been on the stream for a long time. You see, this is another reason why I'd love to be able to go live. So I can just do this. I can just talk. And, you know, have the chat. Even if there's only three people in it. I could answer their questions. I could... Yeah, I'm buying a thousand subs. I'm buying a thousand subs on Wednesday. I'm gonna do it. Anyhow, uh, peace.